So this is the build video for Orion, our custom overland trailer that I built over the past few months. It started life as a 17 foot boat trailer that we picked up in the middle of 2022. It initially had a 17 foot scout on it that got moved to an aluminum trailer. And so I began mocking up how this could become an overland kayak hauler. So I'm gonna start with a video. I'm already kind of far along, but just to keep record of what we're doing, this was the trailer that a scout boat came on, we're going to take it all the way down and turn it into a kayak collar. But hubs are pretty shot. Replace the springs just to get by, to get this trailer to go have the aluminum one built. But took off all the bunks, all the hardware, brake lights, it's down to the bare frame. There's an L reinforced iron goes along and we'll take that off and drop the axle so it'll just be a frame got stuff to go ahead and grind all that surface rust off there's some bad spots we'll reinforce that um i'm gonna cut the tongue down now that there's not a boat sitting on it so i'm gonna pull the tongue off so it'll simply just be the basic frame yeah grind off all the corrosion on the galvanized trailer and then bed line it. So I forgot to take a video during this portion but I went ahead and got the axle off and then began to ground down the rust and corrosion and then picked up a Herculiner truck bed kit from Lowe's and then did two coats on the top and then in the next clip I flip it over and do another two coats on the bottom of the trailer. So trailer update, it's obviously flipped over at this point. Tongue's still missing. Um, I did not paint the tongue. It's two days after the initial video, the last clip. Went ahead and got four by four steel angle. It came as a 20 foot stick. I cut it down to two six and a half foot sections. So it's a little heavier duty, but the new axles require four inches instead of two. Right now the frame's two by two. And I wanted to reinforce my three spots that are rusted on the bottom. So you can tell basically that bolt hole, which was not used before, will now be used and this six and a half foot section will span. So I gotta drill all those holes and these pieces and then the tail light goes there. But the six and a half foot span will end at the very rear of the trailer, probably half an inch short. So there's nothing to hang out and get snagged. But basically there's two coats of the Herculiner. It's pretty messy, but had good results in the past with it. But everything is coated. Took about two and a half days. And then now I got this coat to dry. But this side of the trailer was in much better shape. But you can see the texture on this Herculiner. It's almost dry, it's kind of tacky right now. but I have not painted the tongue. I still need to figure out how much I want to get it cut down. I mean, it once had a boat, the whole bow of a boat supported on it. Now all I basically need is a jack stand and a spare tire. So got to figure out that. But basically the idea now is to build a wooden platform that goes from the rear to this brace. And then that leaves this basically trapezoid up at the front open that I don't know if I'm gonna just span that with wood it should work it's not that far and just not put heavy stuff just span that open air not quite sure what I want to do there 
sticking with doing a wood deck from the rear to this brace is an exact six foot length. So I won't have to cut any of the two by sixes and just stack them on the elevated deck all the way across, bolt them down, won't have to cut anything. And then on that, the kayak, your typical like J, J bars will bolt down through the treated two by six deck. And then basically you can put two kayaks stuff in between wherever you want. So it's been a couple days, been working on it here and there in the evening. Um, there's a clip I'll throw in that shows the lights at night, but I went ahead and we'll start at the front. The tongue got bedlined, cut down. I'm waiting on the Dexter drop and go low profile hitch to bolt that on. Put the old wheel back on for now have not decided if we're going to keep the wheel or go to like your standard flat plate that campers use give it a little more stability did the seven pin eight pin connector instead of the four i'll have to trim it down it's eight feet long right now and i've only got to go from there to the truck so got a lot to cut off but that's on there um it gave us the ability to do reverse lights and in the future, if we want to add a 12 volt battery system that can charge off the truck or whatever vehicle's towing it. So with the lights, I sleeved everything. You can kind of tell it runs along. So from this corner, it runs across to that corner. You can see everything tied up there in the corner. Got to get more zip ties, but everything gets tied there. And then it's one run to the front instead of typically you run two up the middle kept it simple ran one less wires to keep track of um pulled out the old kayak bars just to get a feel for how four of them will sit on here still got to build the wood platform but did your standard lights and then we added some nylite floodlights off Amazon to the back bumper to light up camp spots, boat ramps, the yard when we're coming home, anything like that. Um, not sure if it's shown in the other clips, but you can see usually the trailer stopped right about here. So it's a two inch by four inch C channel frame. Then the L iron was Two inches by four inch so now we have four by four to mount the timber and suspension but it also gives it a lot more strength that's bolted up so it spans the entire flat length then we'll bolt the axles and the fenders back up using one of the holes there's still a lot of holes covered up that didn't get drilled so that'll strengthen it even more but the timberin's supposed to come tomorrow. All of the brackets finally arrived from the Compact Custom Campers company out in Portland, Oregon. I'll link their information down below just to keep record of everything. So to bolt that onto the trailer, that's where the roof rack frame's gonna go. I gotta pick up the steel tomorrow. But I cut these 10 inch long segments out of the leftover 4x4 four four angle so those are basically going to go on the inside of this 2x4 frame and reuse both of those bolts it'll be longer and basically there'll be a little flange that sticks out but the angle is going to come up and then it's going to turn and it's going to bend over so it's going to overhang the edge of the trailer that much but it'll put it up top so the brackets will be out of the clear space for the deck so the brackets will mount outbound to the trailer and there'll be basically two hoops so to use those two bolts and those two bolts and the brackets will sit on top and then the hoop will go up five feet over 
down and that'll make a hoop. There'll be a hoop on each side and then it'll connect in the middle three foot from center, basically center the three foot on the roof rack since that's what's recommended. But that'll kind of put the tent somewhere right in front of the axle. Basically, if you take the center of those two points, you're kind of right at where eventually we'll probably have to mount a two by two to reinforce the axle that'll run across up high. But that's basically the center point. So these are the 14, your standard 205, 75, 14 tires. But it's kind of level right now. And it's got a good bit of glare around clearance, especially now that the axle's gone, which was the whole selling point of this whole idea, that the trailer frame is the low point. There's nothing in the middle to hang up, which is gonna be pretty nice. We're excited to put the tent on. I don't think I've shown it yet, but we got the 23-0 Weekender. Ended up trading uh, a few things on Facebook. It's a 56 by 80, I believe what it is. It's an eight foot by five foot, basically, once you unfold it, but got that for about a hundred bucks. That's gonna mount to the frame that goes on top. And that'll pretty much be the last few things before we start building a wooden platform. I got the coupler. It's the Dexter drop and go. It's the same one that we have on the other trailer. We have love that hitch. It's actually rated for 7,000 pounds, but obviously we don't have 7,000 pounds, but overall look of it is it's starting to come all together. So we worked pretty late last night and got the cage on there from Compact Camping Concepts. But uh, basically, it's not all the way bolted on yet, but made these 10 inch brackets that through bolted with everything else. And then the foot that they supply sits right on top. I gotta drill out the remaining four holes on each corner. But they supplied all the hardware. Um, they supplied these corner brackets. So basically all you need is inch and a half square tubing and then you can basically whatever measurement. So we did from the top of the trailer up is three foot ten. So that puts whenever the wheels are on it and everything that puts the bottom of the tent roughly at six feet. So you still have room to walk underneath it. The wooden deck will span the trailer and so we'll be able to stack kayaks, anything underneath, and still have room to get under there and grab stuff. But basically it goes up three foot ten, and then it goes over, and then we span two and a half feet on center and put the bars that connect everything. And then the tent has basically a a track and so you could put it anywhere I gotta get some better hardware that all came from the previous owner so after that we went ahead and started mocking up what a typical camp would look like we got the annex on and then that's about four foot by five foot and then from there we installed some of our tent upgrades like the fitted sheet cover and then the gear loft and then this is the Slumberjack tarp. We went ahead and installed that just to kind of get a feel for how camp could potentially be set up. We got some general Grabber ATX 30s. That's what's going to be on the trailer. We got them bolted on. We still have plenty of ground clearance now that we have the official rims and tires mounted up, but we did run into one issue that I'll mention later on. This is the image of it. It's been a few days. Um, there'll be some pictures after this before I show the suspension. Um, I had to, long story short, send the other one back 
there was a typo online. The tires I ordered did not fit, but waiting on the new hubs that come tomorrow. But got the first part of the wooden deck finished. So it's a bunch of two by six. The corners are attached with self-tapping screws and then the middle uses the Fasten Master lock line, replace lag screws. Um, so this area will be recessed just a little bit. And then the rest of the deck, I'll also put a picture of just laying them all out, kind of mocking it up. But it's gonna, the boards will sit on top of this, running across like, like you build a deck. But then up front, so we left it open so you could get to the lights and everything. Um, there's a big storage box that I'll also throw a picture of that's going to hold all the different gear. So that'll go up front. And then if we ever want to mount gas, water, propane, anything, it'll be up front also. But got them all laid out, cut straight with the frame. The whole look at everything is coming together. So the wheels and tires are back on. So that's a big accomplishment. Um, you can see from the previous pictures, the spindles were too short. And so the tires rubbed. So of course these are way overkill. This was the next size up, but that allows us, we can do basically any size rim and tire we can do different offsets down the road if we want to ever adapt it to like to match a vehicle of course we can't do that with the two vehicles we have now but it could be adapted to Toyota Jeep anything um the only thing I could get down here in Charleston of course is galvanized hubs so I don't have to worry about those really rusting instead of powder coated They're a little more expensive but little less maintenance having galvanized but you can see I finished the supports that will support the deck I got to figure out what I want to do with the 2x4 running front to back um, that basically is supporting the middle of the front deck I kind of like it tying the front three together since most of the weight will be up front it'll keep some of the boards from twisting um, it doesn't sit all the way down. It leaves a quarter inch gap at the bottom. I just have to figure out how to attach it. And of course, it was not long enough to do the whole trailer. But you can see at the back, the boards will pretty much end flush with this board, I think. We might overhang just to, just to protect the lights. Come six inches, but we're going to bolt them down first. And then we will cut them all at once but everything pretty much comes even with the edge of the frame another look at the distance i mean it's a it's a good six inches or so that it now overhangs so of course these are trailer rims so they have zero offset so now we could do wider tires add some offset in the future but for now it's just going to stick out and then we'll cover that with fenders somehow once the deck's on i'll probably build some sort of supports that hold the factory fenders um with this new suspension and bigger tires the existing bolt holes are basically where the timberin now is and of course a fender's not going to bolt there it needs to be higher since they are pretty big Still need to get the metal cross member, but for now, since we're not towing anywhere, just went ahead and going without it. Like I've mentioned before, you had to pick one of the three. You either had to brace right in front of the suspension, either had to use these two bolts, or you had to use the two by two. We're going to do all three just to be on the safe side. 
but how it looks right now. Next clip should have, it's 11 two by sixes. Go on there lengthwise. And that's zero gap. So up front I did a little bit of a gap. But at the back we're gonna, it fit 11 perfectly between the uprights. All right, so everything is pretty much finalized. So we got the toolbox on the front. It's bolted on the back and then screwed in in the front. All the camping gear is gonna go in there. We have a pretty big flat area to put stuff. Probably gonna mount the spare tire there later on. Fire extinguishers mounted. It's bolted or screwed in there. The sides are made with two by tens. And then I screwed them in just to keep everything square from the outside. And then they are pocket screwed every other board down the side. The side walls are screwed in to the uprights with metal screws or self-drilling self drilling metal screws. And then in the middle, I did two pockets. And then at the rear has one pocket just to keep that last bit from flexing. The rear overhangs about four inches protect the lights so I just need to bolt up the fenders that'll bolt to the wood and then the rear is gonna stay open for now and then we might do something temporary bar or something just to keep stuff from sliding out the back but uh, the main main goal is a kayak and I don't want a lip or anything to, have to deal with with the kayaks, but built with bunk brackets from the old trailer, or this trailer, just whenever it was a boat trailer. But that's it. It is pretty much finished. So the next step was, of course, putting the kayaks onto the trailer just to get a feel for how much would stick out and how the overall appearance would look. We then mounted a spare tire. I upgraded to the Bulldog 2000 pound jack. I began mocking up the propane tank and added fenders. And this is another view of the completion, you can see the empty gap next to the tent that's eventually going to hold a toolbox. We got the AT Overland propane bracket. And then this is the Apache case from Harbor Freight for tools. The final look of everything. So, we've got all the the drop and go hitch, the Bulldog 2000 pound jack stand. We did just your big husky box from like Home Depot. So if you open that guy up, this is where all of our camping gear, it's all out of there right now. We're going through everything, figuring out what we want to take, but that is the Husky box, it's through bolted to the deck. We've got the spare 225 75 15 tire. We have the fire extinguisher on that side, and then mounted over here on the AT Overland bracket is the five pound propane tank. Wheel trucks stay up front next to my boat. I did like your standard flatbed trailer tie down points. So there's basically three at the front, three in the rear. The two outsides face in and the middles face front to back. The 
frame came from Compact uh, Camping Concepts out of Seattle, I believe is where they're located. But I had left over angle iron from doing the reinforced bracket that runs the full length of the trailer. So I cut out a little 10, 10 inch section, through bolted that through two of the existing bolts, and then basically chamfered off the edges so you didn't snag your leg. So that's bolted in, and then this is an inch and a half tube that builds right at right at five feet tall from the base point I believe it's a five five by five by six square cage that I built and then the compact camping concepts made all these brackets so they sell all these brackets and included the grade five hardware so everything came from them I just bought the tube cut it to the length I needed running same rooms as the spare but we got a 235 75 15 with the general ATX light truck tires um, running the fenders that came off the old trailer or whatever it was a boat trailer just for the time being till we can get some of the like uh, diamond plate Jeep fenders. Final look at the rear. So we got two six inch Nylite uh, floodlights wired up to the reverse on the seven pin that I put in. So whenever you shift into reverse, it lights up the whole area behind. The whole deck is basically uses this design here where you have your trailer bunk bracket through bolted with one of the factory holes that came off the trailer and then that's bolted into the wood those two by four span bare on that and then the deck is uh, using the ledger lock by fasten more or fasten master those are fastened that way two by ten on the edge those are self-tapped with metal self-tapping screws into the upright <clears throat> same thing on this side then I got a Apache case from Harbor Freight that is U-bolted up top gives a nice handle to try and pull up here but up here basically have all the stuff to do wheel bearings some tie downs for the boats some camping axes and then there's space for whatever else we need gives a good look at the tent so we have a 230 weekender 56 and that folds out on the passenger side which gives us the opportunity in the future to add an awning off the rear one of the 270 degree or even a straight awning off the driver's side we want to do one of the 230 uh, shower house enclosures but the front deck is lowered we have stabilizer jacks that we put at the front and the rear and then the entire suspension we decided to go with the Timberin it's the Timberin 2000 pound HD with the long spindles so the long spindles allowed the tires to clear we don't have any hang-ups and then we you had to pick uh, one of the three options you either had to brace right in front of the axle you had to through bolt at the top and then you could either add a cross beam so with this trailer we wanted to be over engineered so we have the cross bracing which is factory on this trailer and then you can see the cross beam so I added the cross beam and before the deck was added we threw bolted through this four inch angle iron so we have just about 18 inches of ground clearance 
to the bottom of the V where it used to be a boat trailer. But that is the overall final look at Orion, our overland camp trailer. So the only thing left was to finally take it out for an adventure. So the maiden voyage was a week-long trip up to Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. It was roughly a thousand miles for us and everything worked out perfectly and through the trip we've learned of some improvements we'd like to make and we've begun implementing those into phase two which is already underway. A sneak peek into that we are looking at an awning with an enclosed room which that order has been placed and should be here by the end of the year or the beginning of next year. So after that trip we ventured up to Hot Springs, and there's a video right after this of where we camped, and that was just a few night trip up to the AT and the French Broad River. But the only thing left to do is to get out and explore. Taking a video of our camp spot. So we put the trailer right there, right on the French Broad. Walked out there and tried fly fishing some. But we're right on, there's like a little island. We're right here on the French Broad in Hot Springs. The AT goes up that hill there. We're all loaded up.